Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is corrupting. Corrupting. Now a lot of times we talk about corruption and we talk about the fact that uh, even the way that we used to talk about politics and even businesses and things like that. And but it's really hearts that are corrupt. I tell you, my heart really is just broken even as I record this video and you know I record these obviously ahead of time but uh, to, to look today and if you're watching this daily watching this on Wednesday then yesterday on Tuesday that that our, our nation signs in and, and celebrates a bill that celebrates sin and promotes sin and many are praising those in politics for what they're doing and what they've accomplished and I couldn't help but think that the way that the Lord had already line this up for today's passage to be in Psalm 53. And and David is having a, a hard time looking around as well, trying to understand what's going on. And he even gives us a glimpse of what that view would look like from heaven. So let's just dive right in. Psalm 53, looking at the first uh, 50, at the first three verses of Psalm 53 today, it says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Now, let me be clear as we say this, we must understand that every last one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. And as I've said previously, you know, there's a difference in falling into sin and just diving right in and living in it. And the difference here that David is talking about is he's looking around at the uh, the corruption, not only of the just what the wicked have done alone, but the way I honestly, I believe he was looking at the way that it had kind of infiltrated into those who were supposed to be of God. At the end of the day, when we look from heaven's perspective, heaven looking down, right? As he looks down, who does he see that's good? Nobody. No, not one. That's why we need to come only, and the only way we can come is by the way of the cross and by the way of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we can come. That way, when Christ, when God looks at us, he doesn't see us, but he sees Christ. He sees that we're covered under the blood. But yet the wicked who live in such a way, they live in a foolish way, right? Because they live in such a way that God does not exist, that they don't need God. And it's not just our nation, right? It's, it's all across the globe. There are people and there, there always have been and there unfortunately I won't say there always will be, but as long as this earth is here, there will be people that are believing that they don't have to believe in God, that they don't have to rely on God. And even if they believe in God, they don't have to worship him. They don't have to be obedient to him. They don't have to live for him. But when I say all that, if we think about this word corruption, we have to make sure that there is a definite line between an unbeliever and a believer. See, the, the one thing that I love uh, about Christ and love about his ministry on earth was there was no gray area and there never has been a gray area with God. Remember what he says, even if you look ahead to Revelation, you remember what he says there as he's uh, writing the letters to the different churches and he says, look, I wish, I desire for you to be either hot or cold. One way or the other, because lukewarm, I spit you out of my mouth. Have you ever just stopped to think about that? And maybe how much corruption, spiritual corruption has happened and taken place in our lives. How much spiritual corruption has taken place in our homes? How much spiritual corruption has taken place in our churches and in our communities and in our counties and in our cities and our, our states and in the nation and in this world? Have you ever stopped to think about it? We think about how quickly a, a plague or even something like a pandemic, we think about how quickly it spreads. Think about how even like uh, uh, as oftentimes referred to as how cancer spreads in, in our bodies. And, and, and we think about how quickly those things spread. But do you think about how quickly sin spreads? 
we see it so much in these in these latter days that we're all living in. The one thing we know is that we're at least one day closer to, uh, to Christ's return than we were yesterday. And we'll see, uh, as Hebrews tells us, that, look, we don't need to forsake the gathering together of fellow believers, right? Even, even the more, as you see the day, approaching. So if we know it's approaching, we need to come together so that we can fight against the corruption that the, that the enemy is trying to do to tear away the body of Christ, to tear away those believers. Today, my simple charge for us all is to keep our eyes on Jesus, to, to, to keep, keep going on the path and not be distracted by the corruption and also not be infected by the corruption. Yes, there's not a one of us that's perfect. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, but it is the gift of God that gives us eternal life through Jesus Christ and through Christ alone. That doesn't give us an excuse to sin. It covers our sin as long as we're repentant and we're moving on from it. But today, let's make sure we're not living as the foolish live in such a way that they don't even need to live for God. Today, let's be sanctified. Let's be that set apart body of Christ that he's called us to be. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.